This is a swap project with KB Art, and I will leave the link to her Instagram below. Be sure to check it out, and also be sure to watch until the end so you can see me unbox her amazing doll. We both used Luna for the base, and sadly the Hypno doll footage that I promised got damaged, so no repaint video of her, but I wanted to briefly show you what she looks like. She's also a Luna base, and for now, the channel mascot. Moving on to the prep. Of course she needs her dress removed. I love Luna's body sculpt, so I wanted to keep the clothes minimal to really show it off. For the theme, we chose to make a fantasy moon character, and I chose to make a dark moon fairy. I wanted her to be a fairy, but also with an edge to her design, so she'll have a bikini with chains and sort of a darker, mysterious look. I remove and save the hair since it's in good condition. Next she goes into hot water to make her head easy to remove. I remove the hair and the glue from inside of the head and use 100% acetone to wipe her face. I spray two layers of Mr. Super Clear and then set her to the side and work on the body first. I'm modifying her original boots by removing the heels and then using a pin to make a stiletto heel. I use glue to keep the microbeads in place. While that dries, I use nail polish to paint her nails. When I'm not sanding the body for blushing, I like using nail polish because it grips onto the vinyl. Next, I map out how long I want her wings to be, and twist the wires together at the ends. I glue them down to some Angelina film and then trim to size. Carefully pass the wings over a flame. This fuses it together and it also brings out the iridescence of the film. If you hold it close to the flame, you'll get holes, and if you want smaller holes or to control the hole placement, you can use a hot pin. I have this glittery nail polish that matches perfectly, so I use this in the center of the wings. I use craft foam to make her bikini and attach the chain links. Using acrylic paint, I add the details. I attached some tool to the bikini top and then linked the first chain. Next, I make a chain for her neck and will be attaching two long chains to it. I also add one going around her waist. Linking the chains together took a few tries. I'll be using these moon slices to decorate the tool. I also put rhinestones. 
Next, I make the sleeves using this shiny fabric. It doesn't fray, which is great for sharp, crisp edges without having to make a hem. I draw out how long I want the sleeve, and then sew. Since I already had another Luna, I'm using a spare set of arms. Next, I'm making some thigh-high leggings. I turn the fabric inside out and then sew them directly onto the leg. This creates the tight fit that I'm looking for. Then I use tweezers to turn them right side out. These ones stay up pretty well on their own. If you want to be sure that they stay in place and you don't mind them not being removable, you can add some clear glue to the top. I add more details using acrylic paint. If you make a mistake or want to make your lines more crisp, take the base color and then clean up the edges. I attach her arms and add some silver glitter to her fingers for some extra sparkle. I put two part epoxy in the hole in Luna's back and then add the wings and press down so they're in all the way. They will move until the epoxy is fully cured, so be sure to leave your doll in a place where it won't be accidentally knocked around. Once dry, I color match the epoxy to the body and then cover with the glittery nail polish. Next, I'm adding the two long chains. I painted a moon on the bottom of her shoes, and I'm covering the beads in gloss. Be sure to blunt the pin tip at the bottom. I cut the shoe so that I can save part of it for another project. I only need the sole and part of the sides. You can also make this out of craft foam instead of modding an existing shoe. I use glue to attach lace to the front. Once dry, I add more nail polish to the thick parts of the lace. Onto her face up. I redid her eyes because I didn't like how they were in relation to her eye mold. Luna has strong eye molding and I felt that the first shape was fighting against it instead of working with it. After I do the lips, I'll start the eyes over.
I use wet watercolor pencils with a brush for the lips and white acrylic paint for the teeth. Now that our lips are done, I'm redoing the eyes. I keep this shape smaller this time, and I like this a lot better. I'm adding red pastels to blush the cheeks and for the lids. I'm using a dark brown to make the eyebrow hair strokes. Using a gray color, I map out the iris and pupil. I want her eyes to be white with just a hint of iris and pupil showing, so they look whited out from far away and faint from close up. I'm using gray, blue, and just a touch of black using a very light application. With a very sharp pencil, I make the lashes. Because of the strong eye mold, I was getting some skipping where I drew the lashes. You can carefully squeeze the face to fill in the gaps. If you squeeze too much, you'll risk cracking the sealant. This is the fun part, making the tears. I use black acrylic paint. You can clean up or remove paint with a clean wet brush or a cotton bud. After seeing how she will look with hair, I decided to darken the eyebrow to see if I like it better. I like her current brows, but they're a little softer than what I wanted next to the jet black hair. I like the darker brow better, so I do the other one. 
I cover the eyes in mica powder, but keep it light and mainly towards the outer edges, just for a subtle shimmer. I add a moon and three tears coming down from the jewel. I add the eye highlights with white acrylic paint. I gloss the lips and eyes with a generous application and I do not dilute the gloss with water this time. I touch the gem with clear glue. This part I am super excited for. It's my first time using these crystal drops to make 3D tears. The tube has a pretty fine nozzle and you can just use it straight from the bottle. For more accuracy and smaller details, I used a pin to apply the drops. I make the drops thicker at the tip and then I make the stream thinner, so it looks like a real tear. It will look bluish and a little bit opaque when wet, but it dries completely clear. And here's her finished face and hair. I added more glittery polish to her part. I love the silver threads in this yarn. Before I put her head on, I'm adding silver to her raised dots on her body molding, and then lighter silver to the tip. I love how she turned out and really liked making a darker twist on this fairy. And now for the unboxing. We ended up making opposite fairy dolls which wasn't planned at first. They fit together so well they ended up becoming sister dollies and she's a light moon fairy. These barbecue skewers are for making curls. We talked about it months ago and it's sweet that she remembered. There was a note that I read off camera that was really, really sweet and really nice, so I have it pinned to my desk. And we have some pretty flowers. A white gel pen that I'm very excited to try out. These moon earrings are absolutely adorable. I'll come back to the certificate. There's lots of goodies in this bag. I really love these pretty stars.
Very cute Monster High accessories. Yarn. And a little box with even more goodies. Some thicker thread. Dolly hair tools. Two gorgeous pendants. And glitter. A range of very pretty fabrics. I cannot wait to use this glittery lace. And she sent me dolls too. I mentioned Marisol once months ago and again she remembered, which is so incredibly sweet and thoughtful. We have a Frankie, a Ghouls Alive Frankie, another Frankie, and a hybrid doll which we have special plans for. Oh, and this really plush fabric. And Perry and Pearl. And here's the beautiful handmade COA. And she even put a little moon on it. This is also pinned to my desk now. And the doll! It was so hard saving her until last. Wow! Oh my goodness, I am in awe of her. She is even more beautiful in person. She has so much detail and looks so ethereal. Her wings are absolutely beautiful. I love everything about her. Just look at her epic cape. I love it. She's so special to me, not just because she's stunning, but also because of what she means and how close of friends we've become. I am so grateful for everything I received and so glad we did this swap. They look fantastic together. As you can see, she makes absolutely stunning dolls and you definitely don't want to miss out on any of her posts. My account is also linked below and I am just days away from announcing a giveaway, so be sure you're following me on Instagram so you don't miss it. If you would like to support this channel and my repaints, there's a link to my Kofi down below. Leave a comment down below and let me know if you like unboxings and if it's something that you'd like to see again in the future. Just subscribing, leaving a comment, and liking this video is such a huge support and I really appreciate it. See you soon in the next video!
Bye.